Hi guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Canon 8-15 f4L fisheye zoom. This was announced by Canon at the end of August 2010, but due to the disaster in Japan, it's only finding its way onto the market in uh, Canada and the US this week. So uh, we're in August 2011 now, so it's taken some time. And uh, a lot of people are excited about this because it's a brand new lens in the lineup. It's not an update to anything they've previously had. And in fact, it's a fairly unique lens. I don't think there's anyone else out there making anything similar to this one. So um, fisheye zoom lens, what does that do for you? Well, the interesting thing about this is that it will provide a full frame fisheye view as in a 180 degree field of view on all three crops of Canon digital SLRs. So if you have a full frame camera or if you have an APS-H camera like a 1D4, which is a 1.3 crop, or if you have a 7D or a 60D, which is a 1.6 crop APS-C camera, this lens will give you a full 180 degree fisheye view on any of those lenses just by turning the zoom ring. And uh, it's got a couple of design features to help you with that. So if you have it set at 15 millimeters, um, that'll give you a fisheye view on a full frame camera. And then if we just rotate this around, you'll see that they actually have a couple little markings on here, H and C for APS-H and APS-C. And if you rotate the zoom ring to H, that'll be in the correct position for uh, a 180 degree field of view on a one series camera. And if we keep going around, we get to APS-C, same thing, that'll give you the full 180 degree view on your 7D or your 60D or any of the previous cameras in that crop lineup. So that's pretty cool. Um, another thing is this limit switch on the side here. Now if we throw the limit switch, this will actually limit the zoom range from 15 right round to about 10. And so at this far end, that is the right spot for an APS-C camera. Um, so that's handy. It means that you, you can't ever accidentally go a little bit too far and in that case you don't even need to worry about the C marking really. So the limit switch here is handy if you have a, a 1.6 crop camera. I don't really know why Canon decided not to have a two, sorry, a three position switch and just mark on here H and C instead of having these markings here. Uh, essentially they've made this limit switch for owners of 1.6 crop cameras which are all uh, less expensive than the lens itself but they haven't given any limiting factor to the switch for users of their 1 series camera which is $5,000 camera so I'm not really sure why they didn't make this a two position switch really it would have been quite handy and uh, yeah then you wouldn't need to to worry about these little markings on here at all but nonetheless that's what it is uh, the only other switch on here is an autofocus manual focus switch um, no image stabilization or anything like that on this one and uh, it's very well built as you would expect from an L lens and uh, a lens that costs uh, around about fifteen hundred dollars so um, yeah built like a built like a grenade it's uh, it's quite quite heavy for its size and uh, everything everything is super smooth the zoom ring the focus ring um, I think I'm right in saying that it's physically the smallest Canon zoom lens that there is um, so this is also probably the smallest zoom ring that they have and uh, the smallest focus ring you can see there they're thinner than my my thumb is there so to counteract that, they have a different uh, rubber grip on them than we've seen on other lenses. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit deeper, a little bit more grooved, and the rubber seems to be quite tacky, which is, which is nice. It works really well. Um, the zoom ring, in particular, feels uh, feels nice and nice and smooth, and you get a good grip on there with this rubber. So that's great. Um, on the back of the lens. We have uh, this little insert here where you can put gelatin filters in it. You'll see why you need those when we get to the front of the lens. Um, so yes, on the front, 
we got a rather unusual lens cap on this one. Uh, this is actually where I'd like to point out a fairly major design flaw on Canon's behalf here. Basically, um, as with most lens caps, you you have these two little pinches here to remove the lens cap. Well, that's all well and good, but they require almost no force to remove the lens cap. So if I just brush my fingers, you know, I don't really need to don't really need to push the the caps in at all. You can see just by running my finger over it, it comes loose. And this is a bit of a problem, really, because um, of all the lenses that I now have in my bag, this is one that I do not want to have a lens cap fall off. And yet, so far, almost every time I've put this in my bag, the lens cap has fallen off. So that's uh, that's a bit of a negative right there. That's probably, I'd say, the worst design lens cap I've ever seen. So that's quite surprising. Um, it just simply just simply doesn't doesn't fit as it should do. Um, it's yeah, disappointing. Then we have the lens hood. Um, this is this is much better. The lens hood. You can leave the lens hood on if you're shooting on an APS-H or an APS-C camera. Um, on a full frame camera, uh, once you zoom out past 15 millimeters, you will start to see the corners of the lens hood appear in the photo. So you get this uh, you get this little bit of vignetting if you if you leave the hood on for that. But they have a little button on the side which we first saw on the new 70 to 200. So it requires you to press the button to release the lens hood. Comes off nicely easily, and uh, with the little button, it stays on very well. Actually, it's it's compared to the the lens cap, it's very well designed. So um, as you can see, though, if I just take this off, you can see the the convex front of this lens. I mean, it's it's quite incredible lens design to get such a, such a range of fish eyes built all into one. So there's I think 14 lens groups in here, and uh, you know, there's there's all kinds of things to see if you look deep into that glass, but uh, it's very vulnerable. So you're going to want to take a lot of care, which is why it's so disappointing to see that the lens cap just doesn't stay on. Um, you're going to need to find another solution for that in your camera bag, because if you're like me, if you carry lenses around a lot when you're hiking, walking, skiing, biking, all these things, you know, it jumps up and down a couple of times and the lens cap pops off, and then all of a sudden you've got the lens cap itself um, free to rub against the front element of the glass here so yeah out of all the lenses I want to protect m the most this is going to be the one so maybe some sort of neoprene pouch to keep this one in is going to be the answer but um, yeah that's uh, as you can see with the the lens cap off uh, and the hood it's it's physically a little bit smaller than I was expecting it to be which is quite nice although it is still pretty heavy um, one other thing I want to demonstrate quickly I just grab my Grab my 1D4. So this gives you some sort of scale when it's on a camera. Um, but one of the most incredible things about this lens is that the minimum focus distance is is about six inches, but that's six inches from the focal plane. And the lens is uh, I don't know, it's, it's about four inches long. When you put the uh, when you put the hood on, it's another another inch on there. So if we just switch the camera on for a second, one of the most incredible things is that right now this is focused. Just look how close my hand is there. The the minimum focus distance of this lens. We might even be able to get a little bit closer. Actually, let's just try this. There you go. So that's that's the limit right there. Um, I mean, that's that's barely an inch from the front of the lens. So that's uh, that's an interesting feature. And I think having tested it out for for a couple of days now, um, it's pretty fun to play with. And uh, I've never seen a fisheye that can focus quite that close before. There's there's definitely a few issues. Um, with the image quality, I will leave you guys to read the the full review and, and check out the samples. I'm going to include some, some full resolution samples to have a look at. Um, overall, it's, it's not 
a runaway winner. Um, I'm slightly disappointed with a few of the the image quality issues. It's certainly very sharp, but essentially the problem is the chromatic aberrations are pretty bad. Um, much worse than my previous Sigma fisheye, in fact. So I don't know whether they decided to sacrifice some of the chromatic aberration issues for the sharpness. Um, well, quite what they decided to do, but anyway, that's all all in the write-up, so this is more just to give you guys uh, a physical look at it and, and see how big it is and have a look around the lens quickly.